You're listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast, where we unpack the meaning of books, passages, and themes from Scripture. Join us each week as Dr. David Klingler walks us through God's Word and teaches the Bible. Each episode has a study guide available in the show notes. This is Teach Me the Bible podcast. Well, David, today, as we start uh, Peter's letter, we're in chapter one. And uh, as we've said, you know, I, it really messes up the conversation when we have these chapters. But uh, we've done the overview of Peter. And now, as we're walking into this, what what's his focus? Where's where's he going with this? Yeah, so so just by way of reminder, and anytime we're talking about an epistle, mm-hmm. uh, authors write to address a situation. And so, mm-hmm. so as you read this letter, we, you know, we're kind of the you know, we're kind of the third person on the phone call, so to speak. Right. I mean, you're you're kind of hearing these this discussion and, well, and the Peter, group line. yeah, on the group, yeah. <laughs> Peter's Peter's talking <clears throat> to uh, to these first century believers, and we got to try to figure out what he's talking about uh, in reading the letter. Mm-hmm. Uh, he knows what he's talking about. They know what he, they know what he's talking about, but we've got to figure this out. And so, uh, and so, apparently, as we read this letter, uh, there are these. Jewish believers, and and the reason why we say they're Jewish believers, there's just just and, and there's debate about that. Some people say no, these these are Gentiles because of some of the language, but but I think that uh, that that, uh, that that's probably not uh, the way to go. And we'll talk about that as we go through right. this letter. But but these uh, the 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 Christ has come. Mm-hmm. Uh, some of the Jews have believed, and and this uh, one of the things that I found interesting when I was <clears throat> looking at uh, at this uh, years ago. Was that the list of things right here in, in verse one? Peter, an apostle of Christ Jesus, to those who reside as aliens, scattered. That's the first word that we run into. Mm-hmm. That's the that's the diaspora word. It's right. it's the Deuteronomy twenty eight. If you're obedient, I will bless you. But if you're disobedient, I will disperse you among the nations. Mm-hmm. And and that's what's happened. And Israel has not been regathered. You know, when they repent, when Israel repents, when they believe in the Lord, they will be restored. From captivity, and he will have compassion upon them, and that hasn't happened. And so these these Jews have believed, yet they're still scattered, and they're scattered throughout uh, Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, Bithynia, uh, who are chosen. That chosen language is uh, is uh, you know is Israel's language, and and uh, and I remember when I was uh, looking at Acts chapter one and um, and into chapter two. This is a uh, the, the the these men. Uh, it was the day of Pentecost, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, and uh, and there were Jews who were uh, in Jerusalem. This is in chapter two, Acts chapter two, verse five. Devout men from every nation under heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together, and they were bewildered, and uh, they were all hearing in their own language, and and they were amazed and marvelled, saying, uh, "Are not these you know men who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that each one hears in his own language?" And here's the list. Uh, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, those who reside in Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia. It's it's the it's yeah. a lot of the same list, and yeah, and this is where Israel was dispersed. They were mm-hmm. dispersed <clears throat> among the mm-hmm. among the nations, and so Peter's writing to these Jews who have believed, uh, and uh, but were scattered, mm-hmm. uh, and and so and this was all he says in verse two, according to the foreknowledge of. God the Father, um, this plan has been revealed, uh, and and there will be a remnant. And there, mm-hmm. there, uh, these are Jewish believers who are part of the remnant, and and so he's going to encourage them as part of the remnant by the sanctifying work of the Spirit, that you may obey Jesus Christ uh, and be sprinkled with His blood. May uh, grace and peace be yours in the fullest, uh, and and so um, he's writing to Jewish believers who are dispersed, and they are being persecuted. Mm-hmm. Uh, now, there's some verses that people will say, well, you know, there's the, the, there's the Gentiles are, are in view here. And and um, uh, this is like in chapter 2, verse 12. Keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the thing that they slander you as evildoers, they may on account of your good deeds as they observe them, glorify God in the day of, uh, of visitation. Um the and we're going to talk about this uh, next time when we get into chapter two, but just mm-hmm. by way of interpreting chapter one, mm-hmm. <clears throat> uh, keep your uh, behavior excellent among the Gentiles, 
so that in the thing in which they slander you, and the question is, who's the they? Is it the Gentiles or is it someone else? Well, uh, in the near reading, you think, well, it's Gentiles. But, uh, but when you broaden out and you say, now, wait a second, what was going on during this time? Uh, as uh, the, the Gentiles have believed in Christ, they're being brought into the assembly. Right. Uh, and, uh, and so now the Jews are hanging out with Gentiles, uncircumcised Uncirc- Gentiles. <laughs> right who the uh, unbelieving Jew would call unclean. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, uh, and of course, the purpose for Israel always was to be a light to the Gentiles. Uh, and now these Jewish believers are actually being a light to the Gentiles. Uh, and it's because of this reason they're hanging out with the Gentiles. They're being rejected by their fellow brethren, uh, the fellow Jew. And so they're persecuting them. Uh, and, uh, and so the Christians uh, in the congregation... Mm-hmm. are being persecuted. I think about uh, Paul and Paul going from right. place to place, and he wasn't, you know, persecuting First Baptist Church. He was going from synagogue to synagogue right. and trying to clean out the <clears throat> these Most folks. The who, first, the, and then, yeah. then the Gentiles. And, mm-hmm. uh, and we also get indication um, that uh, that they're under, uh, that the Jews in Jerusalem are under persecution from Paul's writings. He's taking, mm-hmm. he's going around throughout Mesopotamia and Achaia, uh, taking up a collection to to take it back to the to the Jewish believers who are in uh, in Jerusalem, uh, and uh, uh, and so uh, so th- that leads us to this last uh, you know in chapter five, she who is in Babylon, chosen together with you, greet you. I, one of our my uh, uh, used to be former students and now uh, fellow professors and teachers at the seminary. Um, Caleb Foley is writing his dissertation uh, in uh, in this area, uh, and um, and uh, I think he's right that what he what he's saying is that Babylon here is a type, and it's referring to Rome. Uh, that 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 or, or not, Rome, not Rome, Jerusalem. Uh, uh, Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Uh, yeah. It refers to Jerusalem. That uh, that that Jerusalem has become like Babylon. They mm-hmm. join forces with mm-hmm. the with the evil side on the wrong side of it, and so. Um, so in writing from Jerusalem and say she is in Babylon, greet you. You know, you know mm-hmm. it, it's saying, look, you have identified with, as Paul would say in Galatians, with the Jerusalem from above, not with the Jerusalem below, not the Jerusalem mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. of this day, which is rebellious. And so, so all that to say, the Jews are being persecuted, uh, and uh, the Jewish believers throughout the, the 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 kingdom, the Roman Empire, are being persecuted. Uh, and uh, and Peter's writing to encourage them. And so he says in verse 3, Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused us to be begotten uh, from above to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. That That is a big verse. Um, wh- what's going on here? Well, this whole born again or begotten from above language uh, J- Jesus is talking about this back in John chapter three. Uh, is the the discussion of Ezekiel thirty six, uh, and in Ezekiel thirty six, in the Hebrew, it reads this way: uh, Ezekiel is prophesying to the mountains of uh, of Israel of the land, and uh, <clears throat> and he says, "I will cause this is in the Hebrew. I will cause my people Israel to walk upon you again." In the Greek, um, it reads a little differently. Uh, it says, "I will cause my people Israel to be begotten." Upon you again, mm. uh, that they will be begotten again. If you do not, if you're not begotten again, if you're not begotten from above, you will not see the kingdom, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and so the first indication, uh, so you have been, uh, these believers, these Jewish believers have been begotten from above, uh, or begotten mm-hmm. again, begotten from above to a living hope. Uh, their hope is a living hope because Christ is their hope. And he's, he's living, living because he's raised, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and so, because he was raised, they will be raised. And so, there's their, there's their, 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 you know, their hope is a living hope, and that their identity is in Christ uh, for the purpose of, of obtaining an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you. Now, Christ is reserved in heaven. The new Jerusalem is being created in heaven mm-hmm. and it's coming down. And, mm-hmm. uh, and so uh, he says, uh, who uh, are protected by the power of God through faith and uh, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last day. And so Christ is going to return their, 
their inheritance uh, is going to be revealed. And, and in this, they greatly rejoice. He says, in this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, have been distressed by various trials, by various uh, temptations, by various trials, so that the proof of your faith, being more precious than gold, which is perishable, <coughs> even though tested by fire, may be found to result in uh, praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. So having not seen him, you you, mm-hmm. you love him. Um, you don't see him now. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, um, those who are scattered throughout Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, who are, they probably never saw him when he lived, mm-hmm. right? And so, so they had heard of this one who was coming, who was proclaimed by the prophets, and we're going to get to that here in just a, just a minute. Um, but they've never seen him, and they don't see him now. Um, but uh, but they love him, and though you do not to see him now, you believe in him. Uh, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, ab- ab- obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. Uh, and so. Uh, this is the salvation. He's going to say this in verse 10. This is the salvation that the prophets prophesied. That th- this, this promised one is the one who was looked forward to the whole Old Testament. He says, uh, as to this salvation, as to this deliverance, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come uh, to you made careful search and inquiry, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ was uh, within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glory to come. And, uh, and, and so it was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you. In other words, they were, mm-hmm. they were looking forward to this time when Christ would, would appear uh, and, uh, and, and this Christ would suffer. Uh, and then he would be glorified. He would be raised. And, uh, and, and so all of this was revealed. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, that, that the Christ was not going to come at their time, but a future time, but you... In these things, uh, which you have uh, have now been announced to you, uh, through those who preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels long to see. Therefore, gird your mind for action. In other words, um, he's he's writing to them, reminding of them mm-hmm. that this is the 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 promised and revealed will of God. Christ would come. Christ would suffer. Christ would be glorified. Uh, but he would be the firstborn from the dead, uh, and uh, and you'd have to endure, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a remnant that was going to believe, the, you know, and he's going to uh, turn to this in chapter 2. You know, you think, okay, what verse uh, would uh, someone who knew the Old Testament summon to encourage them? Well, it would be the uh, the the builder, uh, the, 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 the stone that the builders rejected mm-hmm. has become the chief cornerstone. And, uh, and so throughout Isaiah, the remnant has believed, they're the remnant, uh, but Israel has rejected, and so you're going to have to endure, mm-hmm. right? So gird your mind for action, mm-hmm. be sober, fix your hope completely on the grace which is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. <coughs> so many times um, we we hear uh, that uh, you come to Jesus, he's going to fix all your problems. And it's just, that's just not anything it's not that's ever promised. Mm-mm. Yeah, I Mm-mm. wish it were. I wish, believe in Jesus, Mm-mm. and all of a sudden it, it goes great, right? <laughs> uh, but, but that's not it. Yeah, you believe right. in, in Christ, and, uh, and the world is following Satan, and, and now they're going to, you know, the world mm-hmm. hates God, the world hates Christ, and now the world hates you, and hates you've you aligned yourself. You're, yes, you're in line with uh, And so, what is what? Why do you endure? How do you endure? You need to be encouraged because uh, Christ is raised. That reality is is absolutely our encouragement. He mm-hmm. has been raised, yeah. and he's seated at the right hand of the Father. A- and we don't see him. We haven't seen him. We don't see him now, and so it's easy to lose heart. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this reality uh, of the promised resurrected Christ who is returning. Uh, is the means by which you, you they were and we mm-hmm. are to gird mm-hmm. our mind for action. Um, fix your hope completely 
uh, on the grace, which is to be uh, fix your eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. That's Hebrews, or mm-hmm. or uh, keep your mind on 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 heavenly things, not on earthly things, because because Christ is in heaven, but He's coming Colossians. to earth. All of this is this is the mm-hmm. same. So, as obedient children, <clears throat> do not be conformed to the former lusts, uh, which were yours in ignorance. Now, what's he talking about there? Israel rejected the Lord. They went over and they joined the nations mm-hmm. and they followed in the lust of the nations. And uh, But now they have believed in the Christ. Uh, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior. For it is written, you shall be holy for I am holy. This is, uh, you know, mm-hmm. uh, several uh, times it shows up there mm-hmm. in Leviticus. The Lord saying, I am set apart from the nations or set apart from the gods mm-hmm. of the nations. So you, Israel, are to be set apart from uh, from the peoples. So what does it look like for the first century Jewish believer to be set apart? What it looks like being a follower of Christ? And that means you're signing up for suffering. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and so if you address... Uh, as father, the one who impartially judges according to each man's work, <clears throat> can you conduct yourself in fear during your t- the time of your stay, during your your time on earth, knowing uh, knowing that you were not redeemed with perishable things like gold and silver. Mm-hmm. This comes right. This is Isaiah chapter fifty two. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, for you were uh, in your feudal way of life, you inherited of your forefathers. You know that. Uh, mm-hmm. that, that you've not been redeemed with gold and silver. You've been redeemed with the precious blood of the Lamb, unblemished, mm-hmm. spotless blood of Christ. Mm-hmm. Uh, verse uh, verse 20, For he uh, was foreknown before the foundation of the world, but has appeared in these last times for the sake of you. This is what the prophets were talking mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. back in chapter uh, 1, now. verses 10 mm-hmm. and 11, so forth. Uh, who through, uh, through him are believers in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that your faith and hope are in God. So don't be confused. You, you, mm-hmm. You've got the right God. You've got the right Messiah. You've got the right faith. Endure. Mm-hmm. Uh, since you have in obedience to, uh, to the truth purified your souls uh, for a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart, uh, the love of the brethren. Um. And I think this is going to tie into what he's saying in chapter two, keep your behavior excellent among the Gentiles so that in the thing that they slander you, the ones who are slandering you, the ones who are mm-hmm. saying so, all sorts of evil about you aren't the Gentiles. No. They're the Jews who the rejected, Jews who rejected Christ, Christ, right? right. Uh, and so mm-hmm. <clears throat> it is for the love of the brethren that you endure, that you, not only the your fellow believer, but uh, your brother who is the rejecter, you know, Paul's mm-hmm. going to say it uh, this way, while we were enemies, you know, he went over there and the Jews went over there and aligned themselves against God and became his enemy. He says, and while we were enemies, Christ died for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the Jews went and rejected and put themselves against God. Now, the Gentiles were already enemies, but the Jews became enemies. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. Uh, and and uh, and so Paul's desire, and we see this all through his work, you know, I think of Romans in particular, uh, he wishes that he was, you know, accursed for the sake of his brethren, his fellow Jew, who's a, a non-believer. Yeah. You know, that, that so they would come the, to faith. The brethren is the nation of Israel. Yeah, his, I, th- his brothers, I think that uh, they're not that, brothers that, in Christ. Yeah, in other words, the very ones who are persecuting him uh, and persecuting are them are, you know, you, you know, for the for the sake of the brethren. This this is the whole story. Israel, the remnant, believes. Israel as a whole uh, rejects. The Mm -hmm. gospel goes to the Gentiles. Mercy is given to the Gentiles for the purpose Mm -hmm. of bringing the Jews Mm -hmm. uh, back in. Uh, And so, um, you know, and so, so uh, therefore, since uh, you have uh, in obedience to the truth purified your souls with a sincere love of the brethren, fervently love one another from the heart. Now, uh, so, so uh, they, they have this love for the unbeliever, uh, but the the love of the brethren uh, is uh, you know from the heart. Love one another from the heart. For you have been born again, not uh, of the seed which is perishable, but imperishable, through the living and abiding word of God. And so, so um, the the love of the brethren is not simply the the love of the fellow believer. But I think what drives Peter and mm-hmm. James and John is mm-hmm. the love of the unbelieving one as well. Uh, and, and I think that should drive Which, us uh, as well, too. Well, I mean, we're going to see in the, the example 
of suffering of Christ. Absolutely. For the sake of his brothers to be brought near to God. Absolutely. So, yeah, absolutely. In the submitting to authority. Yeah, and, and so, yeah, that that's exactly right. So in the midst of the suffering, as the unbeliever observes the suffering, he says, what are you doing? Well, there's your chance, there's right? There's your and opportunity. So, yep. Yeah, and so... Um, uh, so, uh, for uh, all flesh is like grass, and its glory is, uh, is flower like the grass. The grass withers, the flower f- uh, falls off, but the word of the Lord abides forever. That's out of Isaiah chapter 40. I mean, this is mm-hmm. right in the, mm-hmm. uh, uh, you know, comfort, comfort my people, yeah. Israel. Mm-hmm. And this is the word which was preached to you. Uh, and so, this word, this message, has mm-hmm. come to these Jews. They have believed it. They've never seen the Christ, mm-hmm. but the prophets were talking of this one. Uh, and so so Peter is saying, okay, so uh, it is, uh, uh, it's time to, mm-hmm. to walk. Now, uh, in chapter two, uh, we're going to, we're going to get into this uh, next time. Uh, but, but it's, there's this, this whole message is just steeped in Isaiah talk. And we're mm-hmm. going to pick that up. Uh, Which is, if, as you said, if he's <clears throat> writing to, Jewish believers been scattered abroad. This should be making a lot of sense to them. Oh yeah, yeah. They, they, this they, language, yep. right? They, yeah, they they mm-hmm. uh, they they need to know this. Mm-hmm. They need to hear this. And so next time, as we pick it up in in chapter two, he's going to continue right down this trail of explaining uh, Israel's rejected. Mm-hmm. They've rejected the stumbling, uh, the, the 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 building stone and the chief cornerstone. Uh, yeah, the mm-hmm. chief cornerstone, and and they've stumbled over it. And he's going to mm-hmm. quote right out of, out of Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, but you, because you have believed, are a holy priesthood. So right. endure, right? Hang in there. This is all according to the plan, right? Right. right. Absolutely. Uh, and so be encouraged. And so that'll be next time in chapter right. chapter two. Well, thank you, David. Looking forward to it. And as always, just want to encourage our our people, our listeners, viewers, uh, and pastors, to stay connected. The local body of believers uh, continue in learning to understand God's word, which is our goal here, and uh, and also to encourage them. Encourage the leadership of the church. I think the pastor, being a pastor, it, it gets so it, well. There's so many distractions, sure. and this is this is a great reminder uh, what you're enduring through. It, it's as as always has been. Yep. Uh, this is the call. So thank you, David. Thanks for listening to Teach Me the Bible podcast. Our desire is to use the power of God's word to change lives. For more information, download our app. Join us next week for another episode of Teach Me the Bible.